Hello. So, in this video, we're going to be talking about how to complete the square. So, in general, completing the square is something that is sort of most commonly used in a pre-calc setting to translate a uh, quadratic from one form to another, um, specifically the so-called standard form into the so-called vertex form. Um, in this class, we're not really worrying as much about sort of the terminology of forms. It is used a lot, however, in calculus, uh, especially in advance of doing certain types of substitutions, like trig substitutions and such. It's necessary to complete the square first in most cases. Um, so sort of writing this in the, in the pre-calc setting, our goal is to translate from the form ax squared plus bx plus c to a form that looks like some a x minus h squared plus k. So essentially, instead of having x show up twice, it's now showing up only once um, by doing some sort of completing the square. That's, that's what the completing the square part does for us. So again, it's sort of easiest to do a concrete example and sort of lay out the steps as we go. So let's look at the example. P of x is 3x squared. Uh, let's do a minus 18x minus 4. Okay. So, just doing this in the other videos seemed to work out pretty well, so I'm going to write in a different color for the steps. So, step one factor out. the a term, if it's not one, if it is one, we get to skip this step, but factor out the a term um, from the first two terms. So in this case, I'm going to have that uh, p of x equals, I'm factoring out the three, I get x squared minus, so I'm factoring out the 3 from here, so I'm going to get minus 6x. But I can just sort of leave that hanging off at the end over there. Step 2. So this, I'm going to call this the sort of new b term. So divide the new b by 2 and square the result. So this I'm, you would just sort of do off to the side as its own work. So right now um, I'm looking at this as a minus 6 as the new b. So my negative 6 divided by 2 which is negative 3. And then I want to square that. So then negative 3 quantity squared equals 9. Okay. Step 3. Add and subtract the result. Inside the parentheses. So again, if we hadn't, if we didn't have an A, um, you can just put parentheses around the first two without anything in front, and all of this will still work the same. So if I do this step, then uh, I have a nine. So I'm going to take this thing. So p of x equals three times. So I have x squared minus 6x. It's a good idea to add first, and I'll show you why in a second. So I'm going to do plus 9, but then I have to do minus 9 also inside the parentheses. This is a big place where things go wrong for people. And then minus 4. OK. Now, by design, this, so step 4. Mm -hmm. 
factor the perfect square. And that perfect square is always the thing you started with, the x squared minus 6x in that case, and the plus piece, which is why I said I'll write the plus first, because that makes the first three a perfect square. So in particular then, p of x equals 3. In fact, I'm going to do this so you can tell the difference. So this x squared minus 6x plus 9. Moreover, it's going to be x plus this thing that we found before, before we squared it. And in fact, that's why we're squaring and get a perfect square. But I'm going to get x plus negative 3, so x minus 3 squared. Again, if you didn't sort of remember that, you could just factor this using your normal coefficients method. You'll get there. I still have a minus 9 left over, though. Don't forget that. Step 5, which is our final step, uh, distribute the A back in and simplify. And to be clear, when we say back in, we don't mean all the way inside the square, we just mean inside these brackets. So I'm going to get P of X equals. So it's going to go 3 times that, times that perfect square piece. So 3 times that. Then I'm going to have minus 3 times 9, so minus 27, minus 4. And simplify, meaning combine like terms here. So I'm going to get 3 times x minus 3 squared minus 31. And that is the result of completing the square. Okay. So let me do one more. Um, I'll do one that's a, a little bit messier looking just to show how it works because this is, again, a perfectly valid question to ask. Um, so let's complete the square. Q of x equals, uh, let's do 4x squared minus, uh, or plus, doesn't matter, uh, plus 9x plus 1. And this is going to be a much grosser looking one, sort of on purpose. So again, absolutely the first thing I have to do is factor out a, but you'll notice here a doesn't factor out as cleanly. And that's just too bad. We still have to do it. So first thing I'm doing, factoring out 4. So I'm going to get x squared plus 9 fourths x plus 1. And just as before, even though it's gross, I'm going to have to take that middle, right, the new b term, take it and cut it in half. So I'm going to take this 9 fourths off to the side here, um, divide it by 2, which is the same as multiplying by 1 half. That's 9 eighths. And then take that thing and square it, which just gets grosser and grosser. That's going to be 81 over 64. Ew. But I got to take that and multiply and, or, uh, and uh, add and subtract it in. So this is 4 times x squared plus 9 fourths x plus 81 over 64 minus 81 over 64 plus 1. And now it's handy to remember how these things sort of are rigged to work because I know that this is going to be x plus a thing squared minus 81 over 64 without doing any work. And in fact, I even know what that plus a thing is because it's the thing that I got when I uh, when I cut it in half before I squared it. So when I cut this in half, I got 9 eighths. So it's going to be 9 eighths plus 1. Okay. And now, so that was this part to this part. So now I have to distribute A. So I have to distribute the 4 back in and simplify. So I'm going to get 4 times x plus 9 eighths quantity squared minus 
So four times this, usually if it's a fraction, there'll be some cancellation. So four uh, can cancel a four in the bottom here. So I'm actually gonna get 81 over 16. Um, so that's doing the four over one times this and canceling. So I'll write it off to the side here in case that wasn't clear. So it'd be four over one times 81 over 64. And then four goes into 64. And so I get 81 over 16, okay? Plus one. So that's its own little sort of side thing. And then I gotta clean that up. So this is four times x plus nine eighths squared. And this is going to be negative 81 over 16 plus 16 over 16. So again, I can do negative 81 over 16 plus 16 over 16. That's gonna be uh, negative 81 plus 16 is gonna be 65 negative over 16. It's gonna be negative 65 over 16, which really is a pretty terrible number, but it is what it is, unfortunately, okay? And so this is the result of completing the square. So I'm trying to emphasize here that it is perfectly possible that you get a nice completing the square value, right? Where everything sort of stays an integer. It is also quite possible you really, really don't. And you need to be able to do both of them. So if you're a little uncomfortable with fractions, I would make an effort to sort of practice that because this is absolutely stuff that comes up on like exams, quizzes, um, shows up all the time in calculus. That's the thing you wanna sort of be comfortable with, okay? So aside from that, that is completing the square. Um, again, just the two second review here at the end, uh, the step one, if there is an A, factor it out. If there isn't, you can just put parentheses around the first two, either way. Um, take whatever the B is, right, the number in front of the X, um, including the sign, and cut that thing in half, then square it, add, then subtract that inside the parentheses, that's key. Then the first three here with the plus thing that you added, that's gonna be a nice perfect square with that as the thing inside, leaving you the minus on the outside here, and then distribute the three and clean up. Okay, and that's that.